All right, everybody. So just the other day, I think it might have literally been earlier today, my, my memory is kind of off on this, uh, the Cavernacle, who is a lefty content creator that's definitely said some stuff I disagree with before, and he's definitely like, I, I don't know if he thinks very highly of me or, or some of my friends, which is, you know, to be expected, frankly, at this point. Whenever there's a, like a lefty figure that makes content I enjoy, I'm like... There's a good chance this person hates me for reasons that uh, probably aren't even true. Uh, but I, I don't really know, like, uh, entirely what the Cavernacle's take is on me. But I can tell you what my take on the Cavernacle is. I think he generally makes good content. He's had some cringe takes sometimes, but generally speaking, I think he makes pretty good content. Specifically, when it comes to issues having to do with internet culture, I do think he usually has good takes. He has been, like, misrepresented before by popular figures that wanted to, like, you know, sort of dumb down his beliefs on certain things and certain content creators. But for the most part, when I click on one of his videos about, like, something involving internet politics culture, it's usually pretty on point. And they're good videos. They're well made. They're well produced. They're well scripted. They're well performed. I like his videos. So hopefully he likes me too. But regardless, he is getting shit right now for this video. It's apparently about how Elon Musk is destroying Twitter and turning it into 4chan. I've made several videos in this exact same topic. I completely agree with that premise. But he's getting shit right now from, like, random, like, uh, uh, chuddy types saying, Oh, you think this is like 4chan? You've never been on 4chan in your life. <laughs> Uh, very, very bizarre. He's had to respond to a few of these people on Twitter. It's sort of like a mini cancellation, which is why I said that in the title. But, um, I mean, it's, it's less so a cancellation as, like, he's just getting shit from chuds for calling out something factually true. And, uh, I was told I should react to this video on stream because apparently it's pretty good. Apparently it makes some of the same points I've made before. Uh, but, you know, I would say that... If you can make a video essay about the same topic you could stream about, the video essay is probably going to be better because you can put more time and effort into researching and discussing and whole, sort of wholeheartedly, uh, you know, exposing the issue, right? Something that's a lot harder to do when you speak off the cuff in a live stream. Anyway, let's hop into the video. I'm curious what he has to say. Because, you know, I've talked about this whole, like, Twitter turning into 4chan thing before. So hello everyone once again from the dystopian monarchy of the United Kingdom, but today we are once again talking about Elon Musk. Now I wanted to make this video for a while because it's pretty funny how badly he's run Twitter, but something I started to notice recently was on like random tweets, you'd get loads of verified accounts just spamming like memes that had nothing to do with it. I think Hassan tweeted something and then just loads- Dude, it's so crazy how right now so much of Twitter is literally just like, oh, I finally had a funny meme or like shit post pop up on my Twitter timeline that actually made me chuckle, something I'm actually happy I saw. Let me click on it and look in the comments to see if there is any discussion or elaboration on this post. And then all of the comments are all like a bunch of blue checkmark people that paid to have their tweets prioritized in the replies. And it's all like the dumbest fucking shit. The dumbest fucking shit. Uh, random unrelated memes, stupid, like, poorly thought out comments about whatever the post is related to, just the worst possible takes and beliefs and opinions about whatever the issue is. Except, like, this person paid to force you to see their takes before anything else. It of, like, right-wing crypto bro accounts were just spamming memes under it, which had nothing yep. to do with what he tweeted. Oh, not only that, have you guys seen... The, like, explosion in Twitter porn bot accounts just flooding the platform. The video is quiet. H how is it so quiet? I, 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 I turned it up. I can try volume boosting the video. Um, but, like, every time at this point that I check my, um, I check my, like, DMs on Twitter, my private Twitter DMs, every single time there is a new batch of accounts that are either crypto scammers, like, offering some fucking, like, code to log into a crypto wallet, or a, uh, porn bot. Saying, oh my god, can you believe this girl's OnlyFans is free? She's the hottest 18-year-old on OnlyFans. And it's like, 
just a flood of se- of porn and crypto bots that all started like uh, you know covering the platform and becoming an epidemic since Elon bought it. And the most hilarious thing about all of this is that one of Elon's biggest selling points for his Twitter purchase was that he was going to eliminate the bot problem. But he has made the bot the bot problem has become worse than it has ever been than I ever thought possible since he took over Twitter. And there is no sign it's going to get better because, frankly, these bots are probably largely responsible for keeping the website like afloat at this point. Like, based on how, like, look at your average conservative. So if I go onto my Twitter timeline, so much of what comes up on my For You page is just, like, Ollie London, uh, Matt Walsh, and other, like, random far-right and Nazi stuff, right? And you look at the tweets, and they've got tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of likes. And that's kind of scary, right? But then you look at the likes themselves. Because you can click on a tweet and see who liked the tweet. You look at those likes and you scroll through it. Let's just be real. You can usually tell the crypto and porn bots from real accounts. And like half of the likes on these posts are porn and crypto bots. Just And you know by first glance you can tell. Just not real people. A substantial amount of Twitter at this point is literally just porn and crypto bots. And it made me realize how outside of my own little leftist bubble on Twitter, the is the video too loud or too quiet now? Because it's peeking into the red now, and I boosted it. Slightly too loud. I will inch it down a slight bit, but thank you, chat. Yeah, wow, a lot of people watching too. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for the support. Verified accounts are completely ruining the whole point of the site, and they're completely ruining everything. Because if you are verified, your tweets get priority over those that aren't verified, and if you are verified, that means you paid for Twitter. And most of the time, if you paid for Twitter, it's because you couldn't gain a big following based on the quality of your posts, meaning you paid for it to elevate your voice. And the funniest thing is, still no one seems to care about these people despite them paying for Twitter. But at the same time, now if you go on like any prominent leftist tweet, underneath is just absolute insanity. And Elon Musk has been fostering this far-right audience himself and recently was even posting about George Soros. Like that- well, it's all, it's it's also because, like, yeah, you can be a lefty figure on Twitter and still occasionally have your tweets go viral. Like, the fact that um, accounts that don't pay for the blue check mark now are, are now suppressed in comparison to check, like, blue check mark accounts basically makes this a lot harder, but it's still feasibly possible as a lefty who doesn't pay for the blue check mark to go viral and build a following on Twitter these days. However, if you do, like, for example, if I click on one of my friends who's like a large lefty figure, like if I click on a Vosh tweet, you would think all of the top replies to that Vosh tweet would be the people that I follow who have also replied to Vosh or the tweet, the tweets that have the most likes in the replies, right? But because Vosh's tweets go pretty viral on Twitter and get a lot of attention, particularly from the right, and right-wingers pretty much all decided to make a culture war issue out of paying the $8 for the blue check mark. all of the top replies will be random Nazis, like, schizo-posting in the replies. Every single time. Happens with a lot of my friends that have larger Twitter followings when I look at their replies on a post they make. A lot of the top replies are people with blue check marks that paid... To have their crazy fucking comments be prioritized over anything else. Elon Musk is turning Twitter into pay to win. That is the bottom of the barrel that he's scraping. But don't worry, pandering and cultivating a far-right audience has come back to bite him because he just appointed someone the new CEO of Twitter. And apparently now she's a woman. This is woke. This is selling out to the mainstream media. He's Simply basically doing she's what the woman. establishment want him to do. I thought you were different, Elon Musk. People tweeting, even cat turd turned against Elon Musk for doing this. Now, by simply appointing a woman... It is so wild to me that one of the most politically influential figures in American politics right now, all because of Twitter and Elon Musk artificially boosting him, is like a goatee having overweight, like, fifty late 50s, early 60s man who has an account on Twitter called CatTurd2 who has a long and extensive history of specifically uh, cat shit and fart fetish posting. And he's one of the most prominent right-wing figures in the platform, 
all because Elon Musk artificially boosts him. Fucking wild. Have you seen what Cat Turd looks like in real life? He's literally an overweight, like, late 50s, early 60s goatee-having dude. I'm not even kidding. And he's got also got a long history going back years of um, cat shit and fart fetish posting on Twitter, on that account. As a new CEO, he alienated, like, 90% of verified ticks. But basically because... She supported, like, bare minimum things during the pandemic, like, getting vaccinated and wearing a mask. They think she's the worst person ever. Like, this is the audience he's cultivated. Wait, really? Elon Musk is unironically appointing somebody who th who thinks that, like, getting vaccinated and wearing a mask is good? I know this is a very low bar to reach, but that does indicate to me that Elon Musk is pretty much silently, like, admitting defeat. He's silently admitting defeat that this way of running Twitter, it doesn't work. He's passing control of the platform onto somebody who can just run it the way it used to be. And it's probably going to go back to normal. Because Elon Musk cannot afford, even as the richest person in the world, I don't think anyone can afford the amount of a, um, of a money sink Twitter has been for the last six months. Five months. By also pandering to the crowd who love medical misinformation, and in essence... Yeah, there's stockholders and investors uh, that are pissed at him as well. Even though he's taken the company private, there are still people behind the scenes that have um, uh, control on the board. So it's like, yeah, it, not to mention Elon Musk's value and his wealth and his actions are impacting Tesla. Which is also really big and also has a very large like shareholder and um, uh, uh, board. Uh, of people that decide, like, what you can and can't do. And not only that, but there's SpaceX as well. And he owns SpaceX, which is currently in um, uh, contracts, several contracts with the U.S. government for bringing up uh, materials and supplies to the ISS. So, like, there's so many people that need Elon Musk to stop being, like, an asshole right now, or he's done. So it, it looks like Elon's starting to realize, like, oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I think it's, I think, I think Elon Musk has realized he's got to step down and, and go back to meme posting on Twitter as, like, the CEO and name only, and then have someone else come along and do all of the actual, like, managing the company for him, because he is not capable of it. He is only a cult of personality that drives up stock prices by posting memes. That's all he's ever been. He has basically turned it into a weird combination of what Twitter used to be and just like 4chan, because that seems to be where he gets his political opinions from anyway. So anyway, we're going to discuss all of that in the video and we're going to look at some clear examples of how paying for verification just defeats the whole point of a social media platform like Twitter, because as we're going to go through on various examples, every post that gains a bit of traction which isn't completely in lockstep with elon musk's own politics and promoting him gets absolutely dogpiled by the most crazy twitter accounts like it's a massive dogpile but in reality you're just seeing their posts because they're verified even if there are like thousands of replies even replies and more likes you will just get given the verified stuff so we're going to talk about all that today but before we go any further please like the video and in the comments let me know what is the worst thing elon musk has done you should also drop a like on my stream if you're watching right now. I noticed there's um, 727 Giga Chads watching stream right now. If you are watching right now and you want to support for completely free, you can hit that thumbs up button. I do appreciate it. Um, to Twitter and also speaking on Twitter, follow me on social media at the Cavernacle on Instagram and. You can also do that for me as well on twitter and also consider becoming a patron. I just launched my podcast yesterday on the main channel, so. Me and Demon Mama are also starting a podcast soon, so keep an eye out for that. Go check that out if you've missed it, talking about my personal political journey and also my journey to 100k subscribers. The second episode will be on my second channel, The Cavernacle Extra, and then the next episode will be exclusive for patrons. And like half the season, which I'm calling it, is exclusive to the patrons, so if you care about any of that, go check out the Patreon page. You also get Invite access to the Discord a guest. server and my Nintendo Switch friend code and some bonus content for my travels, again, if you care about any of that stuff. And also check out my subreddit down in the description. So to start this part of the video, I wanted to elaborate a bit more on, I guess, Twitter meritocracy so if you guys don't use twitter much how twitter used to work like most social media accounts is verified accounts basically meant this person was the real version of this person could be a celebrity or politician 
or this person is verified because I guess they are noteworthy and you want to know it's the real them as well. So it doesn't always have to be someone super famous. A lot of journalists, for example, with really small followings got verified ticks. So you know this is an actual journalist. Apart from that, most... You know what's so sad? Around hitting 100k or so subs on YouTube, you can start to gain the, enough of a prominent following to, uh, like, potentially get the blue check mark on Twitter if you vie for it, uh, with, like, the right way. And right around the time Elon Musk announced he was buying Twitter, it really seemed like I was getting to the point where, like, I was going to be able to apply for it. Um, and then Elon Musk bought Twitter and basically made the blue check mark mean nothing. That's what's really insulting at the end of the day, right? Who, who here played Fortnite really early on? If you played Fortnite, like, early on, you know exactly what phenomenon I'm talking about here. When Fortnite first came out, they re initially released a bundle of skins around uh, Halloween, the first year Fortnite Battle Royale came out. These skins, the Skull Trooper and the Ghoul Trooper, ended up becoming uh, exclusives that you couldn't buy at any point after that one Halloween. And because this game that would later go on to blow up was still relatively small during that time, not a lot of people bought those skins which meant that they became very rare and also an indicator of somebody who not only started playing the game very early and has played for a long time, but it also played the game enough and was dedicated enough that they paid for skins when the game was, like, early on. So these skins ended up becoming very, very big on, on Fortnite. You could consider, like, a Ghoul Trooper, a Skull Trooper skin back in the day, like Season 4, Season 5, as, like... In, like like a blue check mark, but for Fortnite. But then, because there was so much value behind these skins, Fortnite or Epic Games decided to re-release these skins during a Halloween event. Anyone could buy these skins. Granted, there was a custom variation of the skins that for people who had the originals, which was nice. But the original, like notorious, like skin that everybody recognized was now available again for anyone to buy. And yes, people bought those skins by the fucking truckload. Those skins were bought out like crazy and everyone was rocking them for a while. But guess what? You barely see them anymore. You barely see those skins anymore because nobody cares about them. Because they're not special anymore. The Twitter verified tick used to mean something because it was something you had to achieve. You had to be someone important. You had to have done something noteworthy to achieve that blue check mark, or be someone important or involved with important people. It was something impressive to an extent to have the blue check mark. It was worthwhile. Now it means nothing other than you paid eight bucks. It means nothing anymore. There's no actual value to the blue check mark other than the fact that you are actively punished for not having it now. People on Twitter weren't verified. And to build a following, you had to post good stuff. And it often took years. Like I've been on the Kavanacle Twitter since 2017. I have 10K followers. I follow about 300 people. That means most people don't follow me as a follow back. Most people either follow me because they've come over from the YouTube channel and they want to follow my Twitter or because of my posts that have gone. Some of them have been pretty funny. I posted that one about the sword I found in Vietnam, which was made by a plane that had been shot down by Laotian communists, made into a sword and given to Vietnam. So people clearly cool. follow me for some reason or another, but it isn't based on me paying to have my tweets boosted. I've never advertised it. I never took advantage of that feature in the past, having my posts promoted or advertised. And that's how Twitter used to be for everyone. Apart from the verified accounts, we'd all be in this together and it was all basically based on how good your tweets were or how relevant it was or how funny they were and although there were like bubbles like leftist bubbles conservative bubbles where you would see like especially with conservative ones like absolutely insane stuff at the same time that could be countered by a random user and a group of people going over there and anyone can pay for verification now anyone like it used to be on twitter that when like you were a lefty figure or like a lefty arguing with the conservative, it was a battle of vying to make the normies that were watching realize that the conservative you're arguing with is crazy, so that they like they end up like agreeing with you and, and recognizing the insanity of the conservative you're arguing with. Nowadays, though, 
you're not even going to be exposed. Like the normies aren't even exposed to your argument. They're like the normies are just being f like fed a nonstop line of Nazi propaganda on the For You page. And I'm not even exaggerating when I say Nazi propaganda. Like, one of the biggest accounts I've seen, like, plaguing the For You page lately is literally just an account that posts shit like, um, this is black culture, and it's like a picture of Lizzo, and then this is white culture, and then it's like a picture of Rome. Like, these are the accounts that Twitter will not stop, like, shoving down my throat on the For You page. And you would think maybe left-wing people would do that too, but no, we are not giving money to a billionaire. So what happens is you have a mixture of Elon Musk sycophants, conservatives who just want to elevate their voice, and pathetic people. Like, football Twitter is full of this. People whose tweets who couldn't get any traction because they are terrible. Sports Twitter. Sports Twitter is a fucking nightmare. Sports Twitter is genuinely a fucking cesspit. I don't look much into it, but when I do, it is just a fucking cesspit. Twitter sports accounts are always the ones that have the worst takes and the replies to any, like, political discourse. Terrible at posting, so they had to pay for Twitter to elevate their voice. And that's what you have a mixture of now in all the replies. You have far-right types who want to become legitimate and have also been let back on Twitter by Elon Musk. You had pretty sad people who couldn't get any following based on any sort of merit. And then you just have all the insane grifting twitter accounts and twitter has just turned into gab it's turned into parlor it's turned into 4chan now some of you guys might not really know how 4chan works and i guess it isn't a great parallel in terms of how it actually exists because at least for 4chan you can't pay to have your anonymous profile boosted basically how it works you have different message boards and then you have like these forums on different topics and it times out after a while like, you can't just keep going back to it and you move on obviously the site looks really old hasn't changed much and it originally was a spin-off of a japanese version and it was started to talk about anime. But one thing I want to talk about is the discussion board poll, which is where a lot of the far-right stuff on 4chan is from, but 4chan is anonymous. So you, you know what's crazy? Even during my more chuddy, like, era, like my chuddy phase, so to say, I honestly wasn't that into 4chan. I feel like whatever, like, hunger for edgelord posting I had in me was fulfilled by 2B2T rather than 4chan. Like, if it weren't for 2B2T, I think I would have spent time on 4chan and I would have been on 4chan. But, like, whatever, like, uh, 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 desire I needed to have fulfilled as a conservative, uh, or, like, in my chuddy era, that would have been fulfilled by 4chan, I instead went to 2B2T. And granted, 2B2T is oftentimes referred to as the 4chan of Minecraft servers, but it is distinctly different. 4chan, like... 2B2T is nowhere near as bad as 4chan. Like, in regards to, like, people saying slurs and saying horrific shit, it might be. But in regards to people sincerely pushing for a certain, like, far-right political ideology, not so much. 2B2T is mostly just people spamming the N-word and the F-slur and the T-slur. But you're not actually seeing many people engage in, like, you know, detailed explanations of, of why they hate certain minority groups. It happens, but, like, it, it's... it. You don't see much propaganda posting. You can say whatever you want. A lot of it is trolling, a lot of it is genuine. But what is funny about Twitter now is it seems like 4chan's poll, but most people aren't anonymous, so they're just emboldened to say absolutely crazy far-right stuff on Twitter itself. But that's what I was talking about when I say he's turned it into 4chan, because go look at poll on 4chan. Apart from them using far more explicit language. Thematically, I don't really see much of a difference than some of the stuff I'm going to read you today. But now let's start with Elon Musk, because Elon Musk, like I said, has been pandering to the far right over the last couple of years, because nothing makes a rich person pander to the far right than lefties absolutely roasting them and rejecting him. I'm just going to show you some of his Twitter from the last, like, four or five days. If you went back even further, you find Soros this garbage all the time. So it's system, Soros reminds me of Magneto. Jesus Christ. So, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background to this. Um, so, Magneto is a Holocaust survivor in the, in the X-Men story. Um, he was literally a survivor of the Holocaust who, who then goes on to, be, like, to find out he's a mutant. And then in modern day is discriminated against in much the same way he was during the Holocaust for being Jewish, but now it's for being a mutant. But now he has, you know, fucking superpowers, and he's decided he's had about a fucking enough of it.
that that's that's pretty much the the backstory behind Magneto. There's more to it, but that's a lot of the 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 mindset. So comparing Soros, who is Jewish, to Magneto, also, I don't think Soros is like um, a Holocaust survivor, but didn't his like family, like like immediate family, flee like Germany or Poland or some shit like that because of the Holocaust, like. Like there, there's there's a comparison being made there by Elon. I think that's that's very intentional, and I think it's be, he fled at like fifteen. Yeah, he, he okay. So he fled at fifteen. No, it was directly him, not his family. Okay, he's older than I thought. Yeah, okay, he's old. He had to flee hungry. Ah, okay. Yeah, so I think that's a very intentional comparison being made by Elon Musk, and yes, it is anti-Semitic. And yes, I do think Elon Musk is a Nazi. Obviously, Soros and Magneto both survived World War II as Jewish children, remember that. Following up saying, you assume they are good intentions, they are not. He wants to erode the very fabric of civilization. Jesus Christ. Soros hates humanity. Now, as it turns out, it seems that George Soros actually dumped a bunch of Tesla stock. So that's why he's tweeting about George Soros. That's always the thing, right? It's hard to tell where... Elon Musk's very sad, far-right, genuine political opinions begin, and his desire to appeal to the far-right in order to help boost his bottom dollar, and, like, where, where do- they just kind of merge together, like, is he doing this purely for money, or is he doing it because he's a sad, like, a he's sad and actually bought into this shit? And I think it's a bit of both, and I don't know where one starts and the other begins. Doros being someone who wants to erode the fabric of humanity. And some of you idiots might be watching this and thinking, well, what's the problem? George Soros, very rich person, influential person, not necessarily a good person. You also are a complete idiot if you don't think he's pandering to a certain crowd by saying that George Soros is basically fundamentally evil because George Soros, as this extremely rich Jewish man, has been the center of loads of insane American conservative conspiracy theories about- Also, as we found out, he had to flee Europe at five years old to get away from the Holocaust fucking insane to think he's that old jesus and basically single-handedly like delivering elections for democratic politicians or being or funding the migrant caravan in 2018 being behind the refugee crisis oh, 15 in sorry not five 15 15 even older jesus christ 15 years old like that's he remembers it he was 15 he remembers the holocaust like he remembers the, the the World War II and that time period. He was he was sentient back then. He is old. Europe from like 2013 He's onwards. 92. He's 92. Yeah, holy shit. There's so much stuff associated with him. If you're even saying his name in this way and in a more vague way, he knows what he's doing there. He knows that he's pandering to these far right American conservatives. Because also, what is funny is Elon Musk is far richer than George Soros as well. So if we're talking yep. about someone who's like more of a threat to humanity, I would always say it's someone like Elon Musk, not someone like George Soros. And also, just the comparisons to like Magneto, I guess he's trying to say because Magneto hates humanity, but then you have the comparisons with. No, it's because they're both Jewish. Right, World War II stuff as well. So I don't really know. But obviously, bottom of the barrel, really pushing an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. The CEO of Twitter is doing this. So how emboldened do you think all of his followers are going to be in repeating this and also spreading their own ones? Spoiler, that is stuff that you're going to see on this video. But anyway, let's keep looking through his recent posts. And also, I want to know, we're going to see a lot of these people turn on Elon Musk at the end of this video. So keep in mind the stuff he's saying, because they're all going to start saying this back to him. Tweeting at this meme by one of Tim Paul's far-right co-hosts, people should wonder why specific tragic events are highlighted, replayed over and over for the biggest emotional effect. White assailant, white victim, black assailant, black victim, black assailant, white victim, white assailant, black victim. And Elon Musk says, accurate. So basically saying the media is highlighting this stuff. Netflix race up Cleopatra show receives lowest rating in Rotten Tomatoes history. Rightly so. Did you watch it? I'm guessing not. You're just saying because Cleopatra is back in it that you think it deserves to be the worst show. Elon Musk basically just spends all day scrolling through Twitter finding like random conservative culture war posts and then replies one to two word replies like interesting, true, rightly so. We'll look into this. Uh, like like he, he replies in very brief affirmative or negative replies. Concerning. Looking into it, yeah. Of all time. So obviously the head of Twitter tweeting medical. 
It's like he thinks each word that he speaks is worth a billion dollars. So he speaks as few words as possible, because how could he deign to, to waste his breath on the pores. Misinformation. Someone posting some meme with a joker about how anti-vax people were treated. Elon Musk writes, until the Supreme Court struck down Biden's vax decree, he tries to demand that we fire all unvaxxed personnel. Some of our finest people. I don't really believe that some of the finest people working at Tesla and SpaceX were like anti-vax, but again, if he believes that. But then he also replied to another part of it saying, never forget how easily half the country was brainwashed into hating those who refuse to take Pfizer and Moderna's experimental mRNA injections. Elon Musk writes, COVID cult culture. Again, he's just pandering to the far right. I bet he had all these vaccines straight away, but don't worry, it's gonna come back to bite him. Do you guys remember when uh, Elon Musk tweeted all the way back in, I believe it was April 2020, he said there would be new cases would be down to the single digits in America by March. Or sorry, it was in April and he said by March, that that there would be no yeah like in a month he said there would be down to single digit new cases in in america uh uh per day do you mean may i don't remember exactly what months it was it was like over the course of a month or two months he expected covid to pretty much completely disappear and he was encouraging um he, he was fighting against restrictions and mandates to like uh shut down uh uh certain businesses and stuff he wanted to make sure that his factories were still open and his uh companies weren't losing uh profit despite the pandemic so he very early on started denying that it was real and it kind of you know it was one of the big things that started to make him look bad uh before like while most of the world still liked him because of who he appointed the new ceo of twitter so elon musk you know facilitating the far right spread on twitter literally making it a massive haven for the far right emboldening these people and agreeing with them but don't worry it's going to come back to bite him so over the last three years or so elon musk has just been pandering to the worst elements of american conservatism you've seen it there that is just like a microcosm of it go on his twitter keep browsing go back a week go back two weeks go back a month especially go through his replies he literally exclusively interacts with either people who simp for him and are into bitcoin or far-right American types, whether they be people pushing medical misinformation, people pushing conspiracy theories, people who Oh, to be fair, he replies to Ollie London a lot. Saying like the media over-exaggerates racism. But now I want to talk about how much of a cesspit Twitter has become thanks to his policies on verification. Like, what is even the point of verification now? Like, I don't care who some random person is with like 100 followers who follows like 10,000. But it seems like the point is Elon Musk kind of knows that nearly everyone who buys verification will be pro Elon Musk. And although he can frame it as anyone can do it, he knows a lot of people won't, so he's essentially drowning out anti-Elon Musk voices while promoting pro-Elon Musk voices, but also at the same time, loads of right-wingers who might not even like him are still buying these accounts, and they're using it just to try and boost their profile and failing. But honestly, if you read... Well, the great thing is, is that they're just going to take Twitter down. Like, you see these posts getting pushed really heavily on the For You page, and you see they've got tens or hundreds of thousands of likes, and think, oh my god, people are really responding to this far-right propaganda that Elon Musk is pushing to them. You know, what, what if this has, like, a big effect? But in reality, I'm pretty... Like, when you look at the comments, or you look at the replies, or the likes, or whatever, you can see half of the engagement is from bots. Like, very obviously bot scam accounts for porn and, uh, and, and crypto. So... It's not actually that many people engaging with it positively. For the most part, it's all just garbage that's flooding up normal people's timeline on Twitter, and they're just going to stop opening Twitter as much. The less often that pe the, like your average normie is seeing good posts on Twitter that keep them scrolling, the less likely they're going to be to open up Twitter. They're going to open up another app like TikTok or Snapchat or Facebook or Instagram, or possibly even Blue Sky if that's what they decide to migrate to. Um... Like, Twitter is actively hemorrhaging uh, funds, like, pretty badly. So we'll see if this new appointing of a CEO ends up changing things. ...tweet from any verified account who isn't a right-winger, their replies are just going to be completely flooded with right-wingers. Now, here's another one about the recent attack in Allen Mall in Texas. Eric Tola posts a picture of the guy who did it, and he says his personal politics were very hard to figure out. Now, the right-wing seem to believe that because this guy was Latino, there is... Dude, it is so wild seeing right-wingers who swear they're not white supremacists and they don't support white supremacy 
trying to argue this mass vi- this violent mass shooting done by a guy with SS and swastika tattoos couldn't have possibly been the fault of white supremacy. Like, yeah, yeah, we're not white supremacists and white supremacy is bad and we don't support it, but we're still going to say that white supremacy isn't ever responsible for any instance of violence or terrorism that happens and always play defense for it. You know, it's like, okay, okay, we, 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 I see what's up. Even, even when the guy's got SS and swastika tattoos, you'll still use the excuse, but he's brown though. No way he could be racist. Absolutely insane, and obviously really ignorant of history. Even the history of racism. The people who created the first racial hierarchy that reflects the one that we have today in the world were the Portuguese and the Spanish as they colonized the new world, right? So people- I mean, <laughs> good argument to be made, you know? Like, where, where do you think modern day- like, where do you think like 90 percent well actually probably not even 90 percent like i actually don't know the exact details of like indigenous to more like white or mixed population uh dynamics in central and south america but i know that in bolivia at the very least there's like a majority population of indigenous people and then you've got like the white uh europeans who are like in majority power there that, st that that don't represent a large part of the population, but do represent a large a p part of the political and social power there, because uh, they've got a lot of the money. And indigenous people there are treated like shit. I know that, um, like, yeah, so it, it just, it, it, certainly saying that somebody is from south of Texas does not mean they cannot be racist, I assure you, okay? there I could go on for hours, okay? I assure you, someone being s from south of Texas does not negate their ability to be a Nazi, alright? Hell, wasn't there, like, a big thing with, um, like, Argentina or some shit? Like, like wasn't, wasn't there some, like, I know there's, like, the conspiracy theories about, like, Hitler running away to Argentina or some stupid shit like that, um, but, like, wasn't there like a bunch of like Nazi support in Argentina during World War Two and like Nazis like did hide there and, and move there and get support there after World War Two? Like, yeah, I'm sorry. Like man is brown is not good enough excuse uh, for me to believe that this wasn't the fault of, of white supremacy. People who are from Latin America come from countries where this hierarchy was first implemented. And if you know anything about the history of racism as well, people in Latin America or people in Iberia, they thought they were white. They thought they were white, and it's only with Northern Europeans who would say, nah, you're not, because look, you have dark features. I actually get this a lot on YouTube myself, people telling me I'm not white because I have dark eyes um, and dark hair and stuff like that. Although American racists yeah, there, there are the crazy Nazis that are, like, super Aryan-obsessed that will literally comment on my videos sometimes. Like, it's pretty rare, but it's occasional. I do sometimes get, like, super Nazis that believe you have to literally be, like, blue hair, blonde eyes, white skin um, of, like, a certain tone in order to actually be white. And so I'll, ta I'll call myself white in a video, and I'll get one of these schizo-Nazis replying to my posts or to my video, like... At timestamp, you said you're white. You say that with brown hair and dark, br or with dark brown hair and brown eyes. You, you, you're not white. You fucking. Uh, and then they'll they'll go on like a racist rant because I I dare to try to say that I'm white. Like it's not common, but yeah, blue hair, blonde eyes. Yes. Don't view Latinos as white. That doesn't stop often Latinos and people from like Mediterranean Europe actually seeing themselves as white because being a part of a white race is completely made up, and I. Well, yeah, like, race as a concept is made up, and depending on how right-wing you are, that those words will trigger you more or less. So that should be clear with how malleable it's been over history. But anyway, so he posts this. Seems pretty clear-cut. Look at these tattoos. Now look at all the replies. They were National Socialists, so I guess he's an extreme leftist. How do you know this is him? Can't be racist unless you're white. And why aren't those tattoos in the picture that includes his face? How old are they? He's not white, so he can't be a white supremacist. Looks like he supports Ukraine, must be a Biden voter. Let me guess, he drove from Dallas to a white suburb because that's what a white nationalist would do. Trust me, bro. Clown face emoji. Looks like a huge fan of Ukraine. Totally fake and manufactured. Nice try, though. So you have a picture of the tattoos of someone who did a terrible crime and is motivated by the ideology that is on his body. And on Elon Musk's Twitter, all the replies to that evidence are... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true, it's true. I'm pr I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure the term Aryan actually does not in any way originate from like white like, like does not originate and refer to white people in its original definition by any means whatsoever. Um 
I, it, doesn't the term like originally come from like Iran or something or India? Yeah, yeah, yeah India. Like it comes from it, it comes from like uh, Asia. Yeah. No, it was originally from the Middle East. Wait, was I right about it being Iran then? It's literally been all around. Basically, something that you need to understand about uh, like world history is that the Nazis were fucking stupid and unoriginal. And they didn't come up with anything new, okay? Even the concept of oppressing Jewish people and genociding them wasn't original to the Nazis, okay? None of the, not, not, not their imagery, not their aesthetic, not, none of it was original to them, okay? They stole and appropriated everything that they became known for. Because fascists are not creative. Are people doubting it or saying that he's like a Biden supporter who supports Ukraine and stuff because they know he would probably support their side. But that is like for everything now. It's just rife conspiracy theories. Everyone was saying this is a false flag operation to make conservatives look bad. Conservatives, what, you like this too? So he's making you look bad? So again, like this is what Elon Musk's Twitter has become is it's like the conspiracy subreddit mixed with 4chan poll. But that's the reply to everyone. Like that guy isn't verified. He's just reporting on it. And those are all the top replies. And like I said, if there are other replies, they come nowhere near to the top. It's all filled with these. And some of these, like I said, don't have many likes, don't have much engagement, but that's the stuff you get because the people who pay for Twitter are more like these guys I've read you so far than not. So that's why you get no reasonable discussion and it's just rife with right-wing conspiracy theories. Because at this point, anybody who's willing to pay Elon Musk money either like really doesn't care about like anything. Like, like you're like a super disaffected, I don't care about anything type guy, so you just couldn't care less about giving Elon Musk money, principally speaking. Or like, you've noticed that, one, Elon Musk is a massive piece of shit and you don't want to give him money because he's the richest man in the world. And two, the platform that you would be paying for used to be free, has now gotten worse, and now you're expected to pay just to exist in the platform in a in a state that somewhat mimics that which was there before uh, Elon Musk fucked everything up. Like, there's no reason to actually pay. But let's keep going anyway, because here's another one. This is nice. So uh, recently, I might make a video on this this week. There was a national conservatism conference in the UK, which was filled by some of the worst far-right people in UK politics. And Nadia Whitome, who's actually one of the few good MPs, um, called out one of their speeches, which referenced cultural Marxism. She says... Cultural Marxism is an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory supported by groups like the BMP. Disturbing to see another Tory MP spreading it after Suella Braverman did in 2019. We can't let far-right language be normalised in politics. And obviously Jordan Peterson is famous for normalising this term. It obviously builds on Judeo-Bolshevism, which was a popular conspiracy theory back in Germany in the 1930s and 40s. Anyone will tell you that it is rooted in anti-Semitism because it focuses on the Frankfurt School, a bunch of Marxist philosophers. It's not even that, though. Like, the core of modern-day conservative propaganda, even, ties back to fascist and neo-Nazi propaganda. Um, for example, one of the most common forms of conservative media entertainment is videos complaining about, like, degenerate media becoming woke. That is literally just, like, rebranding of degenerate art. The Nazis coined a term called degenerate art. It was any art that was, um... LGBT, communist, uh, postmodern, etc. Just uh, things that Nazis hate. If it de depicted nudity, uh, if it like see, uh, depicted people of color or uh, normalized sex or nudity, um, homosexuality, communism, uh, socialism, anything like that, it was banned and considered degenerate. Um, they burned it, they destroyed it, and even, because Nazis are hypocrites, stole it put it on art gallery, did art galleries, and created art galleries of said degenerate art. Those are, like, to look at, but in a way that's supposed to be different than otherwise, I guess. Like, you're supposed to look at it like, ah, this is the enemy, you know? Um, and those art galleries of said degenerate art were the largest art galleries in all of Nazi Germany. The art that was being banned, the degenerate art, the communist, like, homosexual nudity art that the Nazis were banning was the most popular art in all of Nazi Germany. What game is this? Wow. World of Warcraft Classic. Um, I, I have a guild. I have a fan guild in Classic WoW. I'm, uh, I'm farming gold. 
But yeah, like the, the, the modern day conservative propaganda isn't much different. The shit they complain about, like modern media going woke and all that, they're literally just calling it degenerate art. It's the same concept. They say it's communist. They say it's LGBT. They say it's woke. All these things that the Nazis like argued that art should be banned for. Except now it's on YouTube videos where they just call it woke now instead of calling it degenerate art. And they don't have SS or swastika armbands on. Those and academics who fled Germany in the 1930s came to the US and literally the conspiracy theory from Germany. Oh, Tipster Raid. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. Welcome, everybody. Hopefully you enjoy your stay. Thanks, Tipster. Germany transferred into something else called cultural Marxism, but thematically is very similar in that it's actually Jewish Marxists are trying to destroy Western civilization. That's the common theme in both of them. Even if the cultural Marxism conspiracy theory doesn't necessarily say the Jews, it's very convenient that its origins are in Jewish Marxist intellectuals who fled from Germany, right? You can't deny this. Most people can agree, far a conspiracy theory, but no. Every reply to this is actually telling her she's wrong. So, Sargon of Akkad, I'm sorry that people are saying words you don't like. The problem is that other people have autonomy and you aren't in control of that. If you were, it would be slavery, and British people traditionally view it as a mortal sin, do they? You need to learn to be tolerant, I'm afraid. You're a ridiculous- Dude, I love how the British like to act like they didn't do slavery because they abolished it before America did. Like, yeah, nah, the British didn't do slavery, you know? They totally didn't, because, you know, America abolished it first. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys know a little something. Not only was, was Britain engaging in chattel slavery, and not only were there actively many slaves living in Britain, like, black people who did not have the right to be a human being, they were considered property by the state in England, very, like, very far after the, the gaining of independence by America. But before America gained independence, when, like, shit tons of slavery and plantation ownership and all that shit was happening in the Americas, the British were one of the biggest groups doing this. All of the colonies in the Caribbean and along the coast of America, if it wasn't the French or the Portuguese or the Spanish that were running, uh, uh, sl like, um, uh, plantations where they were doing slavery and whatnot, it was the British doing tons of fucking slavery. They started Chattel slavery. They started the transatlantic slave trade. Well, they didn't start it, but they were a big part of it, okay? So I, I love when British people, because they abolished slavery just a bit before America did, I love when they pretend like they never engaged in it. When they were the... They practically started it, okay? There we go. There's my rant. Unserious person, and that's coming from a guy that yells at a stick for a living. Yada yada, but do women have penises, love? Only a cultural Marxist would say they do. I'm far more concerned with far left anti-Semitism. You definitely shouldn't be. Nice try, but most of the time when I see the term used, it has nothing to do with Jews. But hey, it's not like anyone expects a politician to be honest, spoken like a true Marxist. Well, So, like, one of my favorite things about your average conservative shit poster, and, and these people are shit posting, even if they are being serious, is to pretend as though... They are, like, to pretend like the straw men right-wing uh, propagandists have made of the left as, like, an insult are actually true. Like, how many of these comments have you noticed are, like, trying to get a gotcha on the premise that the left believes only white people can be racist? Like, conservative propagandists have told them so many times the left believes only white people can be racist... That they now are using, the, like, trying to call out hypocrisy in the left using that logic because they have been convinced that is what the left believes. It's genuine brainwash. Documented issue. Nice attempt to gas out the world, but that's a one out of ten. Hey, it's 424. It's past 420. It's time for the first uh, hit of weed of the day. Let's go. Weed time. And no, we're not calling it anti-Semitic, and no, we're not going to stop pointing it out. What a load of nonsense. This is apologist nonsense. BDS is actually anti-Semitism. Cultural Marxism is actual historic reality. So again, don't let them gaslight you. You all see what's going on. We all see what's going on. So on Elon Musk's Twitter, if you are a British socialist politician who points out that the Tory party are using far-right conspiracy theories, you are then dogpiled by verified accounts telling you you're wrong, and the far-right conspiracy theory is actually real. And those are all the top replies. Like, So this is a really good video, and he's making good points. The problem with this, though, is everything he's saying, your average conservative would respond to that by just saying good.
conservatives will hear what, what the Cavernacle just said, and their reply will be, yeah, good. Right wing content should be artificially boosted. Like the left should be suppressed. Do you really think the right wants the equal playing field they pretend like they want? Because conservatives say they hate, they want freedom of speech and they don't want any banning, they don't want any TOS, and they believe that like the best ideas will float to the surface, and if they're wrong, then you should debate them uh, in the open marketplace of ideas, yada, 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 right? Um, and they claim they just want an open platform where no one gets banned for doing anything and it's all just discourse and like blood sports, right? That's not what they actually want. They obviously want there to be no rules applied to them, but they very much want the rules to be applied to us. It's why one of the most common things they do is engage in mass reporting of lefty figures. How often have you seen lefty figures get mass reported and falsely banned on YouTube compared to right wing figures? Lefties are in favor of like TOS and, and, and people getting banned for breaking TOS. But lefties don't really all that often engage in mass reporting campaigns, but the right actually does it because the right makes a habit out of getting together, forming a mob and getting and like achieving something with that mob. One of the most common like this is not a secret either. One of the most popular forms of content on YouTube is just 4chan like videos that are documentaries about 4chan people getting together and engaging in like a ridiculously in-depth like no life investigation, right? Like that's the kind of stuff the right get, gets up to. The left, not so much. All the ones I showed you, from top to bottom, that's basically all I can find, right? I'd have to scroll for ages to find normal people who aren't verified agreeing with this tweet, right? So the only way now we can agree with it is retweet it or like it, because in the comments, it's just filled with the most racist garbage you see. And all of these people paying for Twitter are doing so to elevate their platform. But it's also representative of the average person who likes Elon Musk as well. And this is how he is literally turning Twitter, which I used to like a lot, into 4chan. Like, there cannot be any discussion now because it's completely dominated by this far-right American influence hive mind or just absolutely crazy conspiracy theories. So we've gone through a lot of terrible people and you might have seen them pop up when we're talking about cultural Marxism. But there's also another group of people who have taken full advantage of Twitter verification, and that is people who are pro-Israeli, just flooding the mentions of anyone who criticizes Israel or just points out his- Oh my god, yeah, that that is true. Speaking of which, we've got a Nazi in YouTube chat spamming the n-word right now. Um, yeah, that is true. If you dare to, like, post something critiquing Russia or Israel on Twitter, you will get dogpiled. Historic fact, so Jeremy Corbyn tweets, 75 years ago, over 750,000 Palestinians were violently expelled from their homes by Israeli forces. But Nakba did not end in 1948. Palestinians continued to resist a system of colonial dispossession and apartheid. Today, we renew our calls for a free and independent Palestine. Now, of course, in one of the two countries who is majorly influenced by both conservative groups who love Israel and the Israeli lobby, it's not surprising that this would ruffle a few feathers. But at the same time, you wouldn't really expect every single reply to be some fanatical pro-Israeli supporter, but that's what you get now. You have a guy posting, like, spamming a bunch of stuff in his mentions, which just fill up the top mentions. Like, the site is absolutely broken. People saying, you will never be Prime Minister. Crybaby day is over. Apartheid, anti-Semitic. When will Jeremy Corbyn be expelled as a Labour member? Keir Starmer, someone else saying this is a flat-out lie. And a historical distortion. The vast majority of Palestinians fled their homes to escape a war instigated by five Arab armies. They lost and have been playing the victim ever since. Again, top replies, get off your high horse, stop lying, commie, anti-Semites. Lies, there was no such people as Palestinians 75 years ago. It was only invented by Arafat in the 60s. Oh, Jeremy, you just can't help yourself. You have to spread lies about the Jewish state. So that is... So, like, it's just the worst of the worst people on even, even on both sides that are, that are being boosted because of the, uh, the blue check mark change like elon musk has basically given the megaphone exclusively to the worst people both on the left and the right like mostly the right has the megaphone but the people on the left who do have the megaphone are the worst people on the left like your super hyper neoliberals who think it's literally always no matter what no matter what you say and what you're critiquing anti-semitic if you have even the slightest critique of the state the state or governing rulership of Israel. Yeah. What Elon Musk's verification system really, really enables. Of course they're emboldened 
by the guy who's in charge of Twitter doing it himself. And I'm not even talking about how he has been cracking down on left-wing accounts as well while unbanning terrible far-right accounts which were justly banned before. So they all feel emboldened anyway. But then he tweets like, racist stuff, medical misinformation, promotes all these conservative voices, and you can see what a cesspit Twitter is becoming. And then anyone who will pay $8 a month or however much it is in their region can now go straight to the top in someone's mentions. Like I showed you, Jeremy Corbyn tweeting about Palestine. Everyone replying is basically some far-right Zionist. Seeing someone call out a conspiracy theory, everyone in the comments saying, no, that conspiracy theory is real. And to the outside person, that look- The flat earthers even. I'm seeing more and more flat earther and like 9-11 consp- like classic OG crazy conspiracy theory shit take off. And after anti-vax took off with the right, I am ready for flat earth to take off with the right. But it has to happen before civilian like space travel becomes more accessible. Because we're already getting videos of YouTubers like going into fucking capsules, getting sent up into the uh, upper atmosphere, floating around for like a few minutes and then coming back down. So and seeing like the Earth's curvature and like the Earth from space for a few seconds and everything. So like before that becomes more accessible, the flat Earth stuff has to take off more with the right. Because remember, the right is distinctly anti-science. And if the right's going to stake itself and everything it stands for against science and scientific fact, the things it has to argue against have to get crazy or, or the things it has to argue for have to get crazier, right? How can any science about space be true if the science around gender and trans people isn't true? For the right, right? So, like, that's basically their their logic. They're going to have to follow that or jump off board. I don't even know. I don't know where it leads, frankly. It's like, you know, everyone who's replying to you. When in reality, most people replying to you are not verified, but because of a lack of meritocracy in posting, that's what happens now. But maybe Elon Musk wishes he toned it down a little bit because... He actually announced he is stepping down as a CEO and someone else is becoming the CEO. And this rabble that he has pandered to for the last year or so, they were not happy at all. They were really not happy. They think it's the death of Elon Twitter. So he writes the other day, I'm excited to welcome Linda Yaccarino as the new CEO of Twitter. She will focus primarily on business operations while I focus on the product design and new tech. Looking forward to working with Linda to transform this platform into X, the everything app. So I guess Twitter is changing to something even more garbage but don't worry elon the verified system and all your simps buying it backfires because if you go on this tweet everyone's hating on him cat turd one of the biggest simps for elon musk and actually elon musk works as basically his person this is the cat turd account i was just talking about earlier seriously google what cat turd looks like in real life google cat turd twitter account real life like whatever like find you will know what he the picture when you see him goatee big old 50 60 year old guy and 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 really like you will fucking gag when you see the things that he used to post like the cat shit and cat fart uh fetish posting like he'd horny post about like cat shit and cat farts like he just non-stop talks about it some of them are are very clearly horny posting and fetish posting most of it's just non-stop talking about it but yeah, it's very clearly a kink thing. And it's it's weird. It's really, really weird. <laughs> Someone in chat just reacted, Man's a hoss! Yeah, that was that was pretty much my reaction too. Yeah. He's a big boy. Um Yeah. Bres and a zoophilic scat fetishist, yeah. It's 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 a little it's a little something. We're living in some interesting times. Yeah, he's a white guy, no hair. Uh, goatee, if I remember correctly. Some assistant. He writes, Elon Musk, the woke mind virus is a threat to the world. Also, Elon Musk, I just hired a far left loon deeply infected with a woke mind virus to run Twitter. Twitter 2.0 was fun while it lasted, but get ready for it to suck again. Someone else saying, This is all because she believes that, like, the vaccine is good and wearing masks was okay. Did you see, um, I'm telling you, the, the the conspiracy shit, like the really crazy conspiracy shit, is just going to keep getting more popular and way, way bigger with the far right. I'm telling you. And I think Flat Earth is next. I literally saw Tim Pool post today a video saying, the thing I hate most about, like, pro-vaxxers is they leave their fucking needles everywhere. And it's like a, a picture that he clearly took. You can see it's his beanie. And it's like an insulin needle on the ground. I can't even tell at this point if he's joking or if he is just that retarded.
But his commenters, the people in the replies that are his fans, are that retarded. I assure you. They are. During her interview with you, she was most excited about your initiative to limit reach of tweets which are deemed hateful. Freedom of speech, not freedom of reach. He writes, I hear your concerns, but don't judge too early. I am adamant about defending free speech, even if it means losing money. So before we get into more tweets, you guys will need some context into who this person is to understand what they're even saying. This guy knew- It was an insulin needle, it was a drug needle. It was it? Listen, I've- I- I have not been around drug needles, okay? I'm more of a weed guy. I'm more of a weed guy, you know? I- 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 I'm not really, uh, I'm not really tuned in to the- if- if you have to inject the drug with a needle, I'm frankly not going near it. And- and I'm not going near you if you use it. Um, like in real life. Um, so I, I don't know what, like, a drug needle looks like. I would just imagine one of those cheap, like, syringes. Like, you would see, like, I've seen needles on the side of the road. I mean, they've never looked like that. That looked like it was a insulin syringe. Like, it was yellow, and I don't know. Well, okay. I guess I'm just sheltered. Thank you, chat. Uh, what was the quote? Hold on, what was the quote? Respect to the hood and all of that. I think that's the Mel quote. How many of you guys have been, like, in politics long enough to remember that Mel quote? Respect to the hood and all of that. Can't believe she said that. Oh my god. <laughs> uh... God, you guys don't know- The quote was directly, I'm from the suburbs, but respect to the hood and all that. <laughs> Uh, is Mel even relevant anymore? No, she's not, thank God. Which is why many of you guys don't even recognize that 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 reference. Um, oh yeah, no, she said, I'm from the herbs. Sorry, no. She said, I'm from the herbs, but respect to the hood and all that. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. Did a little profile on Yakarino. So a graduate... A graduate of Pennsylvania State University, Miss Yaccarino built her career as an advertising executive, having first held a variety of roles at Turner Broadcasting System, Inc., a global broadcasting company that is now owned by Warner Brothers. Starting out in media sales outlets from 1996 to 2011, she worked her way up to holding the positions of both executive vice president and chief operating officer before joining NBC Universal. So political involvement, some critics have questioned Yaccarino's political leanings, having previously worked closely for both the Trump and Biden administrations, in 2018, Trump appointed her to serve on his Council of Sports Fitness. This lady is probably like a big centrist. Like she might even be like Republican leaning, but just not as insane as the modern culture war conservatives tend to be. And that's why the right is calling her woke. It's so crazy when the right has decided their Overton window is so fucking like conservative that normal people get dogpiled for having very normal people opinions. Because it's considered woke. I guess it's a good thing, right? Like, we want this to be happening because it's making the right look really bad. But it's also just cringe as fuck. Would it be fucked if I was a troll using a troll hide bag? I feel like that might be fucked. Nutrition, then as chair of the Ad Council in both 2021 and 2022, she worked with Biden and the White House to help create a coronavirus vaccination campaign that reached over 200 million Americans. Miss Yaccarino also serves as chairman of the World Economic Forum's Task Force on the Future of Work, a wordy title that ultimately means helping decision makers from both the public and private sectors train workers in low carbon and high tech economies. So someone who has been a higher up in corporations. Done Wait, like, does that not make Elon woke because his like big industry that he's all about is electric cars and electric vehicles broadly? Like his whole thing is that he's like a technocrat type guy who's building the future of like electric vehicle technology. So wouldn't that make him woke because that's all about environmentalism? I guess it wouldn't because to be fair, Elon Musk stopped like playing into the environmentalist uh, angle with electric vehicles a while ago. Now it's more about the style and the aesthetic of electric vehicles. The idea that like actually the smoothness and quietness of electric vehicles is cooler and more manly than having a loud gas guzzler, right? But Zan, he's real life Tony Stark! Fuck, you got me there. He is real life Tony Stark.
Fuck. Fuck, you're not wrong. A lot of advertising work, but obviously you can see the problem there with Elon Musk and what he's cultivated. You're hiring someone who worked with Biden to make a vax campaign. And he also hired someone who works with the World Economic Forum, something that Elon Musk has also constantly called out as well. And although she has worked with Donald Trump, with the audience he's cultivated on Twitter, I don't think many of them care about that. And indeed they don't. So here is more tweets now that you have some context. So, and again, all verified accounts, you reap what you sow. WEF member, agent of the New World Order, just like you. You can't fool me, Elon. Agent and you're welcome back to the shadow bands of conservatives and anyone who doesn't bow to the- Dude, really at the end of the day, what's happening is Twitter is becoming Facebook. That's really what it is. Okay, the viewer count is so high, it's kind of distracting me at this point, so I'm going to hide it. Thank you very much for all the support, guys. But there's so many people here that it's like, I keep glancing at the viewer count because it's like so like distracting, and I'm just going to hide it so I can focus on the stream. I love you all very much, and I really appreciate the support, but number go up too much for my brain to be able to comprehend and focus on the segment. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You've actually overwhelmed me with support. Yeah, like, Twitter, Twitter is becoming Facebook in real time. It is becoming the conspira boomer Facebook uh, two essentially. Like it is, it happened to MySpace. Like Facebook was like the big new thing, and MySpace became the thing that all the boomers and like it was out of style. But then, you know, the boomers came to Facebook, and everyone moved to Twitter. Now the boomers and conspir conspiracy theorists are moving to Twitter, and we're all gonna have to move on to a new platform. Twitter's gonna be the new Facebook. Facebook is already pretty much looked at as the new MySpace. MySpace is all but forgotten. How many of you in chat even know what MySpace is? Um, yeah, it, it's like tw Twitter's on its way out, I guess. No king rules forever. Trans agenda. Seriously, why did you go through the trouble of buying Twitter just to reinstate a woke CEO? She's literally a WEF executive board member. Poor move, my Elon. Terrible choice. WEF is antithetical to freedom and truth and synonymous with misinformation and authoritarianism. Why choose someone with a prominent part in that organization? Are you trolling us or what? I thought major decisions would be brought to the people for a poll. The WEF brings nothing good to the world or humanity. I cannot support this. Twitter CEO Linda Yaccarino is a social justice warrior. This is going to be a disaster. She's already pandering to liberal ideology. She was sponsored by- They called her a social justice warrior. Chat, when was the last time you heard social justice warrior used unironically, 100% sincerely, as an insult? Like, when was the last time you've heard it used that way? Like, without a hint of irony. Like, someone saying that with their whole chest. Yeah, it's been a while, huh? Fuck. I was not wrong. I really wasn't wrong about, uh, like, another era of right-wing dominance online, was I? It really just happened. It just, it just straight up fucking happened. By Pfizer, Fauci's mouthpiece, and work for the Biden White House. Mask up or pack up, which she says, your new CEO seems a bit intolerant. Was dictator-style leadership part of the job requirement? Yaccarino is a middle-aged liberal white woman who spent her whole career in corporate media. All these people do is destroy in the name of their fake woke religion. When Elon lures us in with free speech, only to appoint a globalist as CEO. How could you do this to us? She's a huge social justice advocate and a mask-wearing absolutist. Neither support free speech. So one more. I, I really do love that, like, to be a conservative at this point, you have to be a cons you have to be a conspiracy theorist. Like, not just like, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist and that you don't believe in the truth in the same way most conservatives always, you know, haven't believed in the truth. But like, no, 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 no. You have to be a conspiracy theorist as in you got to get on board with like anti-vax, new world order, uh, fucking microchips and chemtrails and globalists and like Alex Jones tier shit now. You don't get to be a moderate conservative anymore. And I think this is what's going to kill them in the elections is that there is you're not allowed to be a moderate, just griller conservative. You have to buy into this narrative. And if you don't, you're seen as, like, a coward, or you're part of it, or you're an enabler. And, like, yeah, that's going to pull a lot more people further in. But I think it's going to disenfranchise a lot of people that just want to, you know, live normal lives and are now going to see the right as the crazy ones, as has always been the case, and rightfully so. But the, the, the right's basically just self-destructing right now, it feels like. And, you know, I'm all here for it. As a Canadian, I have to give Elon Musk a dire warning here. 
while I thank him from unbanning my account and returning free speech to Twitter, Canada has been destroyed by my gov working directly with the WEF. I have no choice but to pull my subscription until she's gone. She retweeted Elon saying, thank you, Elon Musk. I've been long inspired by your vision to create a brighter future. I'm excited to help bring this vision to Twitter and transform this business together. And just in the comments, just more unhinged stuff. Denounce WEF and your wokeism ties. Are vaccines your religion? Will you de-boost or censor medical misinformation? How about you explain your connections to the World Economic Forum and your views on free speech? Please also address whether you're still a big supporter of masking and vaccines. Do tell. So I think that is a really nice end to this video of how Elon Musk is just totally destroying any sort of like rational thought on Twitter in that you've seen how this verification stuff affects people who don't agree with Elon Musk, people who are left wing, people who point out facts. You see how Elon Musk spreads far right conspiracy theories, spreads medical misinformation, emboldens these types on Twitter, unbans their account. But now it's coming back to bite him. The new CEO got her job because she's good at advertising. It's no secret that Twitter's value is absolutely tanking and loads of advertisers have completely forsaken the platform entirely because they see it for what I'm showing you right now. Basically like a so- Like I don't get any ads on Twitter. I turned off ad block the other day and just scrolled Twitter and refreshed the page like 10 times to see what ads I'd get after scrolling for like five minutes each time. I got like one or two mobile game ads. Twitter does not have a lot of ads on it right now, which sure, that does to an extent improve the user experience, and that's nice, I suppose, but what user experience are you trying to get through from those ads? Like, the, the, Twitter's gotten so much objectively worse. Um, and on top of that, like, the, the platform needs the ads. A platform like Twitter having very few ads is not a good sign. You'd know Twitter is doing well if there was an ad, like, every four or five tweets which has just not been the case. Social media version of 4chan. I think Elon Musk probably has terrible right-wing politics anyway, but it's pretty clear with a lot of his stuff, he's just pandering. But when you create like this hive mind of Twitter verified users who like what you say, and then you appoint someone like this, they're never going to agree with it. But at the same time, why is he appointing someone like this? He probably could expect some sort of backlash it's because he wants to make money still. It's because at the very least, he doesn't want Twitter to like bankrupt him and have a massive loss. So he's hoping this person can turn it around. But if you actually want someone to turn it around in the corporate environment, you actually have to hire someone who's had some degree of success. Because unlike Elon, from what I've seen, she worked her way up and has been good at her job. So she got hired to turn it around at Twitter. But at the same time, she comes with this baggage of helping Biden and being part of the world. Yeah, I don't really know how this is going to go for Elon, actually. Like, it's very possible this makes the right turn on him and stops supporting him anywhere near as much. Um, and, and that, like, he loses the only, like, big body of support he has left now. Because normies, particularly progressive-leaning normies and, like, the tech bros that were, you know, kind of left-leaning, like, there certainly was a community of people who were like woke Democrat lib types who thought that Elon Musk and his electric car stuff was like the future of like environmentalist technology, like logical, uh, you know, modern, you know, culture and, and technology, right? Like there were there were a lot of people who saw Elon that way. He was fairly popular with among people that were marginally left leaning for a while, um, but he's destroyed that reputation. Normies don't even like him as much anymore. Right now, his biggest supporter base are crypto bros that are just a bunch of dumb fucks getting scammed left and right, uh, and scammers, and far-right people. But once he's lost the far-right people, because that's a very fickle audience to court, I don't know what's next for him. I, I th Or for Twitter. I, think tw I, I genuinely think Twitter's going the way of Facebook either way at this point. But economic forum, so your fanatical verified zealots aren't going to accept that at all. And it's funny like how low the bar is now. Because she wore a mask, they hate her. Elon Musk is reaping what he sows. These people are turning on him because he's cultivated new Twitter as a certain thing. He's allowed these types to have like free reign over everything, harass people, say what they want, tweet what they want, tweet all these insane conspiracy theories, videos. And not only does he allow that to happen, he often comments on them, agreeing with them as well, while spreading his own medical misinformation on this platform. But then it is a bit refreshing to see these people absolutely turn on him because he is pandering. He's pandering because he knows American conservatives are idiots who will simp for him if he just says stuff that they like. But yeah, I used to enjoy Twitter. Let's hope a new alternative emerges, which is better.
Imagine ever having enjoyed Twitter. Now, in all seriousness, Twitter really was, like, a, a big thing. Like, putting aside the memes about hating Twitter and everything and how awful the site is, putting all of that aside for a moment, like, Twitter, for me even, as a content creator, has always been a pretty big deal. Like, if I got banned from Twitter, it was bad. You know, like I, I need, well, I don't need Twitter, but I definitely needed Twitter for a while in order to even like basically meet and talk to other content creators that could potentially be like someone I could collaborate with, make videos with, talk to on stream, etc. Like Twitter is one of the best ways to get into contact with another content creator and to like network and everything. That is the best way to like make a public like, hey, I like your, like, maybe a comment on one of their posts or, like, a tweet at them and your fans, like, comment. It's a good way to get their attention. Basically, like, you know, Twitter's had a big impact in our culture, our society. Uh, it's played a big part in political activism. Like, how many important, like, cases of police violence, for example, only ever got as much attention as they did and justice only came about because the video of whatever happened went viral on specifically Twitter, and Twitter's one of the few platforms that'll allow that kind of thing to stay up and go viral and be seen by people, and that's how it got seen, and justice ended up being uh, had at the end of the day. I wouldn't be surprised if it's happened more often than many would assume. And it's sad that Elon Musk, out of uh, like a narcissistic desire to control uh, the discussion, like just decided, no, I own this now. Uh, and doesn't just result in everything a famous left-wing person tweeting getting absolutely brigaded by verified ticks who just f completely fill up the comment section. But anyway, that is it for the video. Pretty good video, honestly. In fact, there will be a link to the Cavernacles video in the description of this video, so be sure to go send some support over to Cavernacle, because obviously we reacted to his video, and I don't want to just, like... I, I don't want to just, like without any credit or without like sending any support his way just like yoink his content and everything um but yeah definitely go some send some support over to the cavernacle uh very good video i really enjoyed it i thought that was a pretty based video and uh, did a good job of going over the degeneration for lack of a better term of twitter um and uh yeah uh, go send support if you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping some support in the comments. Like, subscribe, ring the bell icon, donate, subscribe, gift a sub even. I appreciate any form of support you send my way. It really does help, and I love you all very much.